with that, I'd like to turn it over to Judy. If I can work my belt here. <clears throat> uh, I'm Jim Tate. I'm a conservation specialist with Hanover Caroline Soil and Water Conservation District. And the producer we're working with today is um, Swallow Hill Farm, uh, Tim Tobin in Caroline County. That's just uh, an aerial view of the farm, not showing up very well there. Uh, <clears throat> this is to give you some perspective of the location of the farm. There we go. This outlined green area here is the Fort A.P. Hill Military Reservation, which takes up about 30% of Caroline County. That red dot right there is Swallow Hill Farm. Just to give you an indication of where it is, this is the Rappahannock River. And it's probably 20 miles from the farm to the river. That's the city of Fredericksburg, and on down here is the town of, of Ruther Glen, and below that is Hanover. Okay. Uh, Tim is, uh, uh, is not a, a farmer by trade. He has retired from industry. He has bought this farm probably six, seven years ago and established a small beef herd. He retired a few years ago and he wants to expand his beef herd and he wants to market uh, all natural beef. He's bought into the marketing hype. He also wants to have some chickens and poultry and eggs and such as that. And he's interested in expanding the farm. Uh, it's a beautiful location. We had a committee meeting there oh, back in the, in the late summer, early fall. Uh, this is a section of silvo pasture, and that's Tim with his cows. He's, he's like most people that have come late to the farm. He loves his animals. Almost all of his cows come to greet him like that one did. Uh, there were three or four of us in the background, which kept the rest of them kind of away from him. Uh, the farm has two beautiful ponds on it. Tim is very interested in protecting these ponds from the livestock. Uh, that's the typical pasture scene. The, the entire property is, I'd say, 140, 150 acres, and of that, it's part pasture and part uh, row crop. He eventually wants to, to make it all pasture, and he wants to graze it in a rotational setup. That's just another view of the pasture from a different vantage point. Uh, this was a later, uh, this was, le this, this fall took this shot, uh, basically the same pasture. Uh, that's one of the crop fields. He has two large crop fields that are actually farmed by another farmer. Tim's ambition is to take these two farm fields back, put them into a, a grass, and, and utilize them for grazing. So here's the current plan. And this is what we're working on right now. Uh, by way of illustration, these are the pasture fields that are currently used for either pasture or hay. This is one pond, and this is the other pond. This was the pond that, we took, that I showed the photograph of. This is the better pond. This one is primarily a runoff pond, and in a dry year will recede. It doesn't go dry, but it will recede. This area, all through here, is the current crop field that he wants to convert to pasture. And so we've been working uh, for, for a good while in terms of, of setup, and we've done a lot of different drawings and a lot of different designs, but this is finally what Tim decided he wanted to do. The red lines with the X's are permanent division fences. I don't know how well you can see them, but there's a blue dotted line, and the blue dotted lines will be pipeline. These white spots right here will be permanent water points. Uh, what we determined we would do is we would run the pipeline along the division fences, and we would put a quick connect at every joint in the pipe, which basically is going to be about every 300 feet, so that we can do some intensive rotational grazing on this. 
Uh, also, we're going to have, uh, for an emergency effect, uh, two hardened access water points, both ponds and this stream, which uh, runs from this pond on down through here, and, and there's a big water source back here. This pond also overflows into the woods back down through here. But we're going to have hardened access here and a hardened access here. We're also going to utilize a animal-powered pasture pump for, for supplemental water. But there are quite a few hardened uh, access points, as you can see, one, two, three, four, five, uh, five water points plus the, the temporary ones. Uh, the plan is that over, you know, we'll, we'll go in with probably summer cover crops here, do one field at a time, and, and then after summer cover crops, go to a more permanent forage base. And of course, you know, he's made application for EQIP to fund some of this. He's made application with that soil and water district for cost share. And so that's what the plan is. And of course, we, as we get this done, we want to have some field days and such as that on the property. So that's the, the project that we're looking at under the grant. Any questions? Yes, sir. We're probably going to put in a well. Yes, sir. There, there is an existing well. Uh, it's a, a board well, and we haven't had it capacity tested yet. That's one thing we want to do to see if that well will handle the, oh, he wants to have 25 cows, so we'll probably have 30 to 40, depending on size, uh, animal units. He wants to, to go cow-calf all the way to slaughter. So, you know, we're still working on animal numbers and such as that. So we've got to determine the capacity of that one well. If it will work, we'll use it. If not, we'll probably put in a new one. But we want to have, we want to have some emergency points in case of power failure as well. Other questions? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we haven't made the determination. We're probably just going to use a nose pump and not worry about frost free. Uh, you know, we, we're going to put the, the um, hardened accesses in so we've got emergency water and just going to go with just a regular nose pump. Uh, there are actually several of them. It, it, it's got a small reservoir, and to access the water, the animal has to push a lever out of the way, and when they push that lever out of the way, it actually pumps the water. And you can, you can handle 25, 35 cows with one of these pumps. It's portable. You, you mount it on like a pallet or some railroad ties or something. You can pick it up and drag it from one part. You know, for example, if, uh, if he were grazing in this field, you could put the pump right there, and then when you moved over to this one, you could put the pump over here. And so it's, it's a portable system. They make a frost-free version, which of course has to be put underground, and it's not portable. Uh, but it's quite a bit more expensive. Yes, sir? Uh, no, the, in, in this area out here, there will not be any shade. Of course, what, we, what, he, what he intends to do, and, and we didn't show that, and I perhaps didn't say it, is he's going to use the portable fencing and, and really intensely graze this. Uh, and I didn't mention it as well. In, in this area up here, there is a significant area of silvo pasture. That, remember the picture of him with the cows? Uh, that, that's a, probably a 20-acre a, a area of sparse trees with grass underneath it. And so probably what we'll do is a lot of the time in the heat of the summer, that, that's probably capable of five or six divisions, and the cows will spend a good bit of time up there in the summertime. Yes, sir. Uh, we haven't gotten down to that. We, you know, I, I'm an advocate of it. You know, what, what you lay out in the springtime may not be what you want to do in the summer. And so what we, these, these will represent the fields, and then the individual divisions will, will be determined in width by the seasonality and by what's out there. Yeah, the how, how big are oh, oh, okay. Uh, 
I think this field is probably in the neighborhood of 20 acres, so there's 10 acres on the side. This, this one is, well, looks like it's about 50% bigger, so it's probably 30 acres and, and roughly 10 acres in each one of those. But the, the, the portable fencing will be used to, to section that off as, as available. Any other questions? Well, that's our project. All right, let's, let's